Welcome to September 15th. This is for Art 1. This is your project. So far on this shading unit, you have created nine spheres, three shaded, three stippled, three crosshacks. You have sketched and shaded a still life. And today you're going to start the actual project. And if I can get this all to show up, that'd be great. So, here's one example. In your um, packet, you will see, or whether you're on Google Classroom or you have a hard packet or whatever, you will see the different examples. And here's one. And what I've added is some comets. Okay, it's got rectangles, it's got comets, and it has spheres in it. You need at least five spheres in your assignment. As you're working, you'll decide which way it looks best. I chose to stipple all these and make them all rounded. Um, looks spherical by using dots. Remember, stippling is the dot method. You can choose shading or you can mix it up or cross hatch. You know, you can have do some of one and some of the other. Here is another example. This is also in the packet. And what I want you, or the documents, what I want you to do is pay attention to how you like the finished copy. I mean, it's very abstract, so it depends on where, which way up you like it. Okay? I actually meant for this green to be the bottom. So the way you're looking at it, it would be like that. Okay? The green is at the bottom. And as these spheres are coming out of the ooze, it's moving up, and then there's more of them up here. Now, if you want to do it that way, and have more circles, more spheres at the bottom, getting dispersed like bubbles, then it would go that way. When you're all finished, however you start it, when you're all finished, you might actually decide that you like it a better way around. Okay? So it's totally up to you. How you end up doing it. You'll notice on this one that I cross hat, I didn't cross hatch any of them. I shaded them or I stippled them. Alright? And you will see my name right in there. If you care about the blur shine, there it is. Right in that circle it says D Bell. So when you're finished, you should put the, your initials, your signature in the bottom right hand corner. That's where most artists sign their work the bottom right hand corner. Now this one was all done with um, pencils for the shading, fine black tip marker for the stippling, and then crayons for everything else. Okay, so that's another one. This is an example of a student from last year and they chose to use colored pencils for the shading. The blue one looks good. You can see this purple one, it's really good, but it's kind of light. There you go. The green one right here a little too dark in the one line. It looks more like a line. So, at least five circles, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do the lines. Now, this person chose to do diagonal lines. If you want straight rectangular lines, I'm about to show you how to do that. Oh, and I didn't talk about this one. This one, I added cubes, pyramid, and a rectangular prism. So after you've done your still life, you now know how to do that one. And it's similar to that one. And the prism is not that difficult. Triangle, part on the edge. Again, dark in the bottom left, going to light in the top right if you're right-handed. Now this one, I've got my lines dividing the page. And I decided to paint. Can it paint? Yeah. Might be marker. No, it's paint. I decided to paint the background slightly different colors. So if you stare at it, you might see that the light blue is in front. And then there's the dark blue and then the black is way in the distance. Or if you stare at it the other way, the black might be jumping out at you and the blues are in the distance. Kind of reminds me of looking out of a window. My black is, if I put little stars in here, you would have really that would have looked more like it was going back into space. So it's called Spheres in Space, this assignment. And if any of you watched the old um, Muppets, there was a little skit on the Muppets called Pigs in Space. Anyway, this is Spheres in Space. So you're going to start with your paper. 
12 by 18 is the size we're going to be using in class. I would suggest that you guys try to figure that out at home or bigger. Definitely use paper. Don't go for the poster board. That'll, it'll be too shiny for shading. Okay? Um, so, first thing you're going to do is decide where you want your lines or where you want your circles. It's up to you which way you want to go. I've got three lids here again, same three lids I think I used last time. Small one in case I want to stipple it or I want, I could shade it still, but I, you can stipple a large circle. It's going to take you a long time. So, and if you want to get big on a circle, it doesn't have to be this kind of lid. You could get a really large circle. I wish I didn't have one right now. Let's see if I can get one. I don't advise using a dirty circle on there, but you could get a really big one if you want. I'm going to push really hard so you can see. It's a little difficult to see. There you go. Um, and then have some overlapping or halfway behind. So if I draw this right here and connect it to that one, you see now I've got a circle in front of a circle, and that gives it some depth. That's going to give it some depth. And illusion. I've got this one down here. I think it's hard work upside down. I think I want one over here. And maybe a bigger one. Now, the tricky part is knowing where to put the circles. This is where your paperwork says use a sketch first. So the sketch might help you to lay them out. So let's say, and I might end up adding some more as I add my lines. Now, the lines are going to go across the page any way you want to. You could have started with the lines. It's totally up to your choice. Now, one way, I want my lines to be the same thickness. I don't want them to be like arrows. So I'm going to draw one side of the ruler, not pick it up, and draw on the other side of the ruler. Okay, and again, I need to move the ruler down so I can go off the edge. Some of these are going to go off an edge. Some of them you might connect. Now, if I want to go like this over here, and I want to put it right on the end, I'm going to go over this. So this line that I'm about to draw is actually, go, actually going to go in front of my circle, and I think I messed up the ruler move, so we're just gonna have to wing it right here. And finish that one. Now, when I do the shading on this circle, and this is why you are gonna want to press lightly, but I didn't think the camera would pick it up. So now, this circle is going in front. It creates layers. I believe your um, I believe your rubric talks about layers. You want to create some excitement. Well, I've got this line here, and then I've got this line going off. Do I want my picture, my viewer, going straight off the page? No, I don't. So I want my pic, my person coming back this way. Maybe I'll do something annoying or different. I don't know what and have it come back like that. So now you're bouncing like a ping pong ball. You have to have lots of lines, but the more things you put in your picture, the more interesting it's going to be. So everything wants me to go behind. I'm going to make this one a skinny line. So I'm going to draw this one line. It's going to go off the page, and then I'm going to come next to it. Now this is the part where some people make it and it, will, it ends up being a triangle. You can measure it, like you could get your ruler here and measure one centimeter and put your ruler on the line. Put a, I've got the number nine on my line. Put a little mark on that number eight. Make sure your ruler is clean as you use it. There's some reason the marks I'm not happy about. And then you connect the dots. 
And again, I'm having this line, this skinny line, go behind the circles. Now, since I put one skinny line on, I really am thinking I'm going to put another skinny line just to balance it out. And this one I'm going to go in front of. So again, your ruler will you'll erase easier because you will push lighter. There you go. If you get to Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's, these are great erasers. There you go. They're not cheap. Okay, so I think that's good for now, and I'll decide later if I want it this way, or if I like it better this way, or if I like it better that way. I think I like it better that way. With the triangle down in the bottom corner. That's actually the way I was designing it, but it's upside down. So if I can get you guys to see the way I see it. Ah, there we go. All right, so now you're seeing it the way I want it. Good. So, I have my circles and my lines done, all right?